Welcome to the Future Thinkers Podcast. I'm Mike Gilliland. And I'm Yuvia Ivanova. And this podcast is all about the future. Hello. Very nice to see you. Welcome to the podcast. This episode is about the Fermi Paradox. So what is that? Fermi Paradox is the contradiction between the high likelihood of the existence of alien civilizations and humanity's lack of contact with them. There are billions of galaxies out there that are billions of years older than ours. Our sun is a pretty young star, and if Earth is typical, some of these stars probably have Earth-like planets which may develop intelligent life. It's possible that some of these civilizations will develop interstellar travel, and at any practical pace of interstellar travel, the galaxy should be completely colonized in probably a few tens of millions of years. So if you think about it, the Earth should already have been colonized, or at least visited, but there's no convincing evidence that this has happened. So out of the billions of galaxies, stars, and similar Earth-like planets, there should at least be some that contain life and technologically advanced civilizations. So where the hell is everyone? So we're going to talk about some explanations of why Fermi's paradox exists and why we haven't been contacted by other civilizations and, you know, what the likelihood is that there's other civilizations out there. So my personal favorite explanation of why we haven't been in contact with another advanced civilization is that humans exist mainly in four dimensions, three of them describing space, the length, width, and depth, and the fourth one describing time. Many theoretical scientists talk about there being 10 or more dimensions. So that means that there are many dimensions that we can't even perceive from our physical bodies and, well, from our instruments either. Not yet, anyway. So it's very possible that these other intelligent beings exist on completely different planes of reality that we just can't comprehend. And maybe they are all around us and we just can't see them. Uh, It's also possible that maybe they started out like us with physical bodies and in a sort of a physical reality and later evolved to occupy other dimensions. One of my favorite possibilities comes from the explanation that we as a species are relatively young. We've been taking only a couple of millions of years to develop and we've only had technology for a couple of thousands of years, if that. And we've only had like the internet for a couple of decades. So the rate of change that we're going through now is insanely fast. And if you project just even a few decades into the future, there is a very, very tiny window of opportunity to get to and communicate with an intelligent civilization that is able to pick up transmissions and is not extremely far ahead of us and would view our communications like we view ants. You're not going to sit around and talk to an ant, so why would a super intelligence sit around and talk to us? Anything we say is going to be silly and very basic. So one of my favorite reasons we haven't been contacted yet is that this civilization has advanced in technology so far that it started to go through what is called stem compression, uh, which is the compression of space, time, energy, and matter. And it's the idea that the most complex of the universe's systems at times, like galaxies, stars, habitable planets, living systems, technology systems, they use progressively less space, time, energy, and matter to create the next level of complexity in their development. So what this means is that as a civilization gets more advanced, they stop moving outward into the galaxy and they start moving inward. They can shrink their technology, they can shrink their consciousnesses, and exist both in a virtual reality and in an infinitely tiny reality in the physical world. So it would be entirely up to them whether we would be able to communicate with them. If they wanted to observe us, if they wanted to let us develop naturally without intervening, at that point in technological advancement, it's all exponential. So they could be so far ahead of us, billions of times more advanced than us, And there's no reason and no possible benefit they could gain from talking to us. So we could already be colonized. We could be monitored at all times through nanotechnology that is completely undetectable by us. 
I think that's pretty cool and creepy. Yeah, there's actually a, a really good YouTube video that explains the ten dimensions that talks about this, that to a, a being or an entity that exists in some of the lower dimensions, a being existing in one of the higher dimensions would seem to appear and disappear out of thin air as they are passing through those lower dimensions. And it's explained actually in a really easy to understand visual way. So that would be one of the explanations why uh, we have these seemingly supernatural appearances of UFOs or, you know, people seeing ghosts or anything like that that we just can't explain. Some of the other reasons I think are funny is that they're just too busy. They're uh, too busy online. They they don't want to bother with us. They're on, they've created a level of entertainment and sophistication of media that they don't want to bother with anything outside of their own virtual realities. I think that's kind of funny because that's something that would definitely be possible with humanity. You know, say we developed just the ultimate video game and we could play it endlessly and it would just be the most fun thing in the world. Like, I could see people not wanting to do much else. Oh yeah, there's a, there's actually another uh, hypothesis that we already are living in a virtual reality and that the beings that have designed this virtual reality for us have made it empty of other civilizations. So that's why we don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. What's that one called? Uh, the planetarium hypothesis. Right. So that's that says that we are beyond a certain level in our solar system. That's the end of the simulation. And everything that we see is just a simulation or just a, an illusion. We're just this little like science experiment. We're uh, in a zoo or a planetarium. <laughs> kind of the, the Matrix-like scenario. Then there's the, the idea that the Fermi paradox itself is what prevents communication. I think this is kind of funny. Because everyone is silent, everyone remains silent. Assuming that all of these other civilizations don't want to contact us, there must be a reason for it. They must be scared. There must be some problem or some law that exists, intergalactic law that prevents them from contacting us, and that by us attempting to do so, we'd be violating that law or we'd be bringing unknown dangers on upon ourselves. So, you know, there's that assumption that everyone else is quiet. Maybe we should be quiet too. It could actually be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is a couple of decades ago, they sent out a probe that had recordings of human music and drawings of naked humans and things like that. Going back to the stem compression, I think it's possible. This this is based on the transcension hypothesis. Jason Silva talks about it. I think I might have mentioned it in a past episode. But there's this idea that once we compress ourselves and our technologies down to a certain point, the only way to advance even further and to reach our computational goals is to collapse in on ourselves and take advantage of other dimensions, sort of what UV was saying. And that in doing so, we will slingshot ourselves into the future and meet up with all the other advanced technological civilizations. Some timeless reality in the future. I think the transcension hypothesis is kind of a combination of your view and my view. Let, let the cicadas begin. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, the sun has just set and we've got uh, some cicadas serenading each other outside. <laughs> Can you go out and tell them to stop? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Can I record a podcast here? Oh, it sounds like an alarm. Yeah. So here are a few ones that I actually really don't like. I think it's very human to assume that other civilizations and even us in the near future are going to have the same type of emotions that we typically have going through nature that we're going to be violent and selfish and greedy and, and we've evolved to only care about ourselves. And I think it's silly that people assume we're never going to find a way to overcome that as a species. It's almost like anthropomorphizing aliens, other intelligent beings, assuming that they're going to have the same humanistic problems. So there's a few hypotheses that say it's the nature of intelligent life to destroy itself and it's the nature of intelligent life to destroy others. We touched on this in the previous episode that people assume that other beings are like ourselves, but I think all the ego-based emotions that we have are because we are biological beings. We have these temporary bodies. And who's to say that these advanced civilizations are not AI-based? Why, why would we assume that they're based in a biological body? 
And even if we look at some other forms of life on our planet, like viruses, for example, they can live for very, very long periods of time. And there are other types of life on our planet that are very difficult to destroy. So if that kind of life was the basis for this advanced civilization, I'm, what I'm saying is like if a virus evolved to be really advanced and became intelligent, then maybe their priorities and feelings, if you want to call it that, would be completely different. Which is one of the other hypotheses is that they're, they're too alien to communicate with us. They'd be too different. They wouldn't have any values that were similar to ours. They wouldn't want to be contacted by us. So they try and remain invisible to us. Or maybe their form is just so different that they, they see us, but they don't even realize that we're intelligent beings because we are so different in our physical appearance and the way that we affect our environment. It kind of makes you wonder about like ghosts and spirits and demons and the past of what people thought was a specter or a god speaking to them. It makes you wonder if they did see something, but they just didn't categorize it right. They didn't recognize it for what it was. Yeah, or like when there have been waves of people coming up with the same idea in different parts of the world at the same time. You know that sort of hive mind idea that ideas are in the ether and we can uh, focus our mind, we can obtain them. And that could also be related. I mean, what if these ideas just exist on a different dimension where those more intelligent beings exist and they're pitching these ideas to us? Okay, I think you're, you guys are ready for this one. Here you go. <laughs> right, I think that's it for this one. The cicadas outside are just going nuts. They really want to be in our podcast. So we'll, we'll cut it off here. Thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. If you want to check out any links mentioned in this show, you can go to our show notes at futurethinkers.org slash episode three. And if you like the show, please consider subscribing on iTunes. And if you really like it, please leave us a review. We'll see you in the next episode. Laters. <laughs>